All right, welcome back everybody. This is Tinkercad part two with Professor Dan at the University of Colorado, where I hope to show you some tricks and tips, trips, tricks and tips about using Tinkercad. Um, so now we, in our first video, we kind of walk through what it looks like when we break stuff. It kind of has a little bang and it tells us little error messages and how to hook up the LEDs. Let's create a new circuit and see if we can go through the first part of the ITLP Arduino workshop. So, what does that mean? Well, let's look for an Arduino. So, if we want to do the Arduino workshop, oh, look at that. If we crawl down there, we can actually see there is an Arduino with a breadboard. I don't love that. I just want a regular old Arduino because I know we can make this on our own. Wow, look at all those cool things. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. All right, so let's go basic and do an Arduino. Which will hold it. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So basic, and we do Arduino. I saw you down there. So we'll move you over. There we go. Give you a rotate. And then we go breadboard small. All right, so if we go through the, uh, the Arduino workshop, the first thing we want to do is actually not even hook up an LED. Why is that? Well, we want to make sure we know how to code this thing. And so we can see right here, we have the LED on the breadboard. We have some TX and RX that probably not going to blink, but those would blink when we uploaded programs. We have some power sources and things like that. So in Tinkercad, we're going to go over to code. And it has these blocks. I don't love the blocks. Um, blocks aren't going to teach us Arduino. And by this point in time, we are going to, we know enough about Arduino. We can use text. Are you sure you want to close? Yes, I do. I'm going to delete that because that's what we're going to do. So every Arduino code needs two things. First is void setup. The next is void loop. And it gave you this, but I just like starting with the fundamentals. There we go. Remember, setup runs each line of code one time. And it's where we do things like set up our board and we tell, what, what does that mean? That says, hey Arduino, we want to use these pins in this way. And remember, pins 0 through 13 are digital input-output pins. They can either take input in or provide digital uh, output out, like hook up a LED to them. And then these analog pins over here are analog input pins. Those are to get information in from analog sensors. We have our little tildes. Those are for PWM, which just is a way to control the amount of output using a digital signal. And let's see, yeah, then we just have our power source over here and our ground. And remember, whenever we're making a circuit from Arduino, think circle. You gotta leave it, you always gotta come back, and when you come back, you usually wanna go to ground. All right, so if we wanna blink the LED on this L, what do we do? Well, we have to remember that that L light is connected to pin 13. And if we want light coming out of the Arduino, we have to set it as an output. So pin mode, 13 comma output, output, output. Then we always remember our semicolons. That's it, that's all we have to do. So now in loop, what do we do? Well, we have to use our command, and what's our command? Command is digital, because it's all or nothing, and we want to write it, because we want that output coming out. So we write digital write, 13 comma high, then we delay, for a certain amount of time, let's do, let's do, let's have it on for 1.5 seconds. And then we do digital write 13 low. And I'm just going to run this, even though I know it might have a little, might have a bit of an issue. So we start the simulation, and our light is always on because we say turn on and wait a little bit while it's on, and then we say turn off, but we don't tell it to wait while it's off, so you have to click stop simulation. So let me do digital write 13 comma, oh, we already have that. Do delay, let's turn it off for 
500 milliseconds. Start that simulation. Plug it in. Oh, on for one and a half seconds, off for half a second. There we go. So we know that that's working. So let's add an external LED to it. So how do we do that? Well, we just off-click code. We brought our breadboard over earlier. So now we gotta find, let's find an LED. Whoops, control Z. We know we want a resistor, and in our kit, there are 330 ohms. So we're just gonna add a 330 ohm. And then we're gonna add an LED just like that. Cool. All right. So now we gotta get information from this Arduino to this breadboard to turn on our LED. How do we do that? Well, we can bring our resistor over and we can orient our LED. We have our anode and our cathode, so there we go. We can put it just like so. And I like having my resistor on the left side so you can, so it's not blocked by that LED. And so now we just bring a wire over, We'll color wire, well it's a signal wire, so we can choose any color we want. And one of the little nice things about Tinkercad is if we click on our way over, we can give ourselves just a little curved wire. And so if we have our positive coming from our signal, that goes into our LED, and then our negative here, we can go, yeah, let's use our little trick, our tip and trick. There we go, we come into ground. Now I always like to make my black wires ground. All right, let's see if this works. We start simulation, boom. Oh, look at that. The one thing I don't like is that this LED kind of fades out. In real reality, it doesn't really do that. So one thing that's interesting is we can actually make mistakes. So if I put pin mode input and start simulation, see how that's dim? So we can actually have dim LEDs on our Tinkercad. So it's actually a pretty cool thing. And we can do the same thing. Out, out. We can do the same thing by perhaps choosing. Too much resistance. Let me start simulation. Yeah. There you go. So you can see that, yeah, Tinkercad is actually a pretty cool tool. So let's do that, 330 ohms, start simulation, A, back in business. All right, that's good for now. Um, we'll do the, hopefully we have a light sensor in this thing. If not, we'll have to find something else. All right, we'll see you back for video number three.